They're not like us. They don't take baths. They stink. They're not like us, fellows. But they're nothing like us. I'm not like them. Then do something about it. Brock the Hawa, Brock the Hawa Shai, Brock the Hawa, Brock the Hawa Shai, Brock the Hawa, Brock the Hawa Shai, call Law Yumi Hawa, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rakakwadash, that's the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in whom we praise. Double honor say our apostles, bishops, elders of Great Millstone, who rule well over the flock of Israel. Shalom and salutations to you, Akim, pushing the words of truth and sincerity. Shalom. I brought this out, this video is edifying. And I'm a proud mom and just kind of just re addressing the last video um, that my brother, the, my brother Samak and I did, um, which is just on um, the, <clears throat> the guidelines to the kingdom and the path to the kingdom is found in these scriptures and the wisdom that comes from it. So it goes according to how, you know, it teaches and uh, describes and instructs on how to behave and how to perform wisely. In these end times, you know, concerning the situations and the times of trouble ahead, all the prophets knew and spoke of these revelations of prophecy concerning doom and destruction, lamentations, mourning and woe. And it's our job, even though wisdom is uh, wisdom, which much wisdom come much grief, even though we're grieved and vexed daily um, because we got the wisdom of the East, whereas we're living in the West, in this worldly West carnal fleshly wisdom that uh, people walk by here doesn't suffice with what the Lord sees as worthy and so we have to relearn and be retaught and be renewed in the spirit of our minds to go along with the Lord's will and the Lord's program which is a beneficial thing all around it's going to benefit you um, in putting off um, uh, carnal thoughts is going to benefit you in casting off your heavy burdens and putting casting all your cares upon the Lord. All your anxieties is going to be seamlessly done away with without any use of, you know, being heavily medicated, you know. So it's really this is the source of comfort, even in the times we're in right now, all the way up into the time of Jacob's trouble, where people will be forced to take an MOTB, whether in their right hand or their foreheads. And we're coming to that time, the bio-digital time. And so, <clears throat> without further ado, <clears throat> it's Colossians 1 and thir uh, 13. It says, Who have delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated us into the kingdom of his dead son. And this was the, the dynamic of the operation that the Heavenly Father saw fit to do. He set forth his son. He didn't, um, uh, uh, what's the word? He didn't spare his son. Except he actually put his son up to be uh, uh, crucified um, for the atonement of the sins of his elect so that he can have mercy upon his elect um, according to the law, according to his purpose and his will that Yahweh Shah would be our propitiation. Basically, we'd be able to, um, all those sins would be blotted out. You know, those sins separate you from the Heavenly Father. So first and foremost, he had to take away your sin. He couldn't even turn it. He has to turn his face away from you, from all the iniquities that uh, we've done. And this goes back into the ancient world because the Lord always refers to this generation and, you know, our father's generation and provoke not your father the wrath as your, as your fathers did. And, <clears throat> And so we understand that the most uh, the ancient of days also has the timeline, the greatest timeline of all. He's able to remember all of our atrocities and our iniquities from times past and they'll accumulate. All right. And that's why we understand reincarnation is the deciding factor on how the most High will pay you back because he can spare, seemingly spare you in this lifetime, but get you in the next all right, so again, who have delivered us into a power from the power of darkness, and that's what we are appreciative of in this truth daily is that we've been delivered from a power of darkness. Again, you have less people that walk around at night, you got less people that go outside at night and operate at night because you just can't see things and creatures lurk that are nocturnal, they can see you, and you can't see them. Well, that's what it's like being delivered from the power of darkness, you can see. You know, you have a um, the vision where people do not have a vision, the people perish. So the Most High gave us a, a, a vision so that we do not have to perish. We can see the evils to come and know how to hide ourselves from it. 
So it's all about the kingdom that is to come in the most High shared us with his uh, glory in his son. Uh, John 16, 17 and 16 says, they are not of the world, uh, even as I am not of the world. And this is how it's y'all speaking, letting you know clearly and plainly that this westernized society, this way of life, this practice, you know, I was thinking, meditating on the fact that they don't even bow or prostrate themselves at all in Western world. Every other Eastern cult culture has some type of a bow um, uh, or a prostrate, you know, even in the Muslim cultures, even in the most Muslim countries and parts of the world, you know, they kneel, you know, they bend down to, you know, to their God, of course, is going off. But they have this form of prostration where they, you know, it's humbly going towards the ground, towards the earth, understanding that you are just man in flesh and a creature. Over here in a Western society, they don't bow, they don't go, you know, drop down at all. You're not, you know, you barely lower your head, you know, uh, except for that flag or something like that. And they don't even do that. They put their hand over their heart. So this uh, humility is completely wiped out and pride is in full effect here in Babylon. Well, the Lord said they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. So he made his claim, which still lasts today, that his elect are not of this world as he ain't. And, you know, which world is, is, is he of? He's of the, of the world of the righteous, the world of, you know, the world of uh, the most high and the vibration of righteousness. That's what the world, you know, the cosmos, the separate society of the elect, uh, the chosen, the most high's redeemed, um, the ones who turn back to the Lord, the ones who seek in the Father daily and continually. So there is a separation even now, and the Yahweh Shah is gonna come back and make that separation final when he returns with the angels to separate the uh, sheep from the goats, right? The righteous from the wicked, all right? So you don't have to feel any type of way that you don't fit in. That's the exact uh, key to indicate that you're on a, di a different path. All right. Now, this is Colossians, First Corinthians, as a matter of fact. And 1 and 34, I'm going straight to the point. It says, awake to righteousness. And that's that same righteousness that makes you separate from the world. And again, righteousness don't look like your westernized culture. It don't look like a, a, a whole lot of, you know, joking around and, and, and a whole lot of you know what I mean it, it just don't look like um, there's a lot more serious notes in this flavor of wine there's a lot more uh, mourning you know he it's better to be in the house of mourning than in the house of mirth there's a lot more there's a lot less laughter and a lot more sorrow in this wine in this cup because we understand the seriousness of the times it's really a uh, dedication to prophecy that allows us to um that the, that the Most High gave us to allow us to be refined and be corrected and be smitten with uh, uh, mourning and lamentation and be in a situation where you're crying to the Heavenly Father to remember you uh, when these troubles come instead of this jolly, joyful, uh, you know, happy day, um, all is well, God is good, God is love all the time and, you know, well, what about the man? That, what about the power that sent the flood and destroyed all but eight souls? Is was he good all the time? You gotta base everything with with reason, and the reason uh, comes from the scriptures. And that's what we're able to do. Call Allah Again, awake to righteousness and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of Yahweh. For I speak this to your shame. So you can remember that everyone isn't given the same lot. You know, every you're not going to be able to take all your aunties and your uncles with you on them chariots when them ships come because you have believed the scripture. The Lord said it was given unto you to understand the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but unto them it was not given. That's the separation right there. All right. Some have some have not the knowledge of Yahweh. All right. So you you being given the knowledge of Yahweh. Now you got to act accordingly. And it's even more time to turn up because we know that how much that salvation and that glory is going to be magnified. And it's anything is better than burning in that fight, right? Acts 20 and 32 says, And now, brethren, I commend, I commend you to Yahweh and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you inheritance 
among all them which are sanctified. So we know we're sons. The scripture says, um, you know, the spirit speaketh within itself expressly that we are the children of Yahweh. We are the children of the Father. So now we can deal with inheritances. Now we can deal with glory, right? Because the Most High is able to cause your face to shine and give you this glorious word, this glorious gospel. He gave us this as a down payment and he gave us faith to believe in it and not only to believe in it, but to deal with it wisely and accurately, all right? Um, uh, dividing, right, rightly dividing the word of truth, right? Not using it for your uh, uh, gain, not thinking that God, gain is godliness. You know, you can be entrapped in all type of ensnares of people who have Bibles in their hands, but don't actually promote the words of the Lord or the truth concerning prophecy because it's scary and because it offends or because it, uh, you know, it's not for everyone. You know, you're not in that trap. You're not in that bondage of, of westernized Christianity. So now you can understand completely. All right, that this is the word of the grace which is able to build you up, man, and give you an inheritance. So you want to walk amongst those who are future heirs. You want to be in that lot, in that stead. And Yahweh Shah, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah has given us that, uh, this word. And furthermore, that understanding that's been unlocked in our minds. It's been revealed in our minds. All right, that, that cur the curses are being lifted off for us to be able to understand these things and be comforted by them. John 15 and 7, if you abide in me and in my, my word shall abide in you. It's always about where, where do you reside? Where is your home? Where is your house? Because that's where comfort is, right? Um, you know, and so our heart is in this truth. You know, your all your soul and your mind is in this truth because you anticipate the coming of the Lord. You anticipate the glory that comes along with it. All right. You give your life you know to this word because he that uh, uh love of his life shall lose it ultimately you can't have anything in a society that's fit for destruction you can't have anything in a with a people that have um uh inherited lies and inherited a culture of death but what you can have is the ability to uh etern you know um be glorified when the sun returns it says if you abide in me and my words in you ye shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you so we have through the Yahweh Shah through Yahweh Bashim Shah this power to be able to get our uh, needs taken care of right? and a lot of our wants taken care of don't think that for one moment that the Most High didn't land you that job that the Most High didn't cause that accident to avoid that to avoid you and touch the next person. Judgment, the Lord said, or is written, the Lord executed judgment every day. And the Lord is angry at the wicked. So he's constantly marking people and sending his angels to, to orchestrate and facilitate that death, right? And that judgment. Some of them might be live, might be live and direct. A lot of them are videotaped and we can see it. But the Lord said, you know, we have to abide in him. And these are the words. That's how important it is to be enriched with this words of truth. Because it's the words that you abide in. That's how you abide in Yahweh Shah. That's how you abide. That's how you are part of the branch now. That's how you are part of the olive tree now. That's how you are a part of the vine now, connected to Yahweh Shah. And the vines that are still connected to Yahweh Shah can bear fruit. That's how you're able to speak. That's how you're able to confidently, boldly come towards the throne of Yahweh Shah and it's being ministered unto you. You have all types of saints and servants and spiritual, uh, you know, angels working around you to be able to um, help you understand these words as well. All right. Angels work on your minds as well. Dedicated service. It says this is Romans 12 and 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Why? Because this world, even in the West, they don't recognize prophecy. They don't recognize prophecy. You can't, they, that's a Eastern culture. That's an Eastern dynamic. You can't walk up to your average American and say, hey, you know what? And when them ships come down, you know, eventually, you know how we don't see them now, but we'll see them all, all the time. 
No, man, they, they, you know, that's called bug being bugged out in Babylon. <laughs> and they're the ones that's bugged out. So you got to understand the reference point is that you have the vantage, right? The ones who were set up on the watchtower had the vantage that the ones who were dwelling in the city didn't. Well, if your mind is on city things, you can't see it far off. And you can't be warned uh, if you're hard of hearing or if you're, the most high stops your mind from hearing it. So, again, hearing that you know these hard-headed uh israelites who, two th who are part of the two-thirds ultimately they're not going to hear they're not going to be converted and be healed it's not for them it was for you that's why this is a blessed seat all right it says and be not conformed to this world and be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of how so now you can see the scripture says being all things shall be dissolved what manner of man shall you be you're always supposed to um, be in that certain conversation mode, heavenly conversation mode, heavenly mentality, right? It shouldn't be anything for you to transition from stats of LeBron over directly into Noah and 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 how you know that the 120 years of prophecy or doom, uh, a conversation, the definition. It shouldn't be nothing that trans. And all things are done in 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 in, in moderation, of course, right? <laughs> but you. you if you get in the, if you gain a feeling of like anxiety or, or frustration with a brother who you know his thing is to talk about the spiritual things and you know he don't really want to indulge in some of that conversation well shoot you deal with that man where where he's at that's where he's at if you want to incorporate or t you know start to teach some type of balance to the conversation level and all that but just understand man we being renewed in our minds and we're not conformed to this world so ultimately guess what the conversation level is always going to go back to if you're not conformed to this world it's going to go back to spiritual things and you know and you, you might have to ask yourself am i indulging way too much in the carnal carnalities of this world and the, you know i get it you know the finals is on i get it you know things is happening you know you know did he this drake i get it but what where does it balance out where does your um uh, contribution to abide in, in this in this word in this gospel actually start to come out and and, and it, you know and exercise his right to speak were, um heavenly things it says that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of how and again with all that being said i said there's a balance to it man there's a balance to it all right. Yes, there is such a thing as talking about entertaining things or, or things that are going on in the world, because those things, if anything, is just going to bring back the point of being vexed um, with the filthy conversation of the wicked. You're just going to be vexed uh, at many things in this in this lifetime. It's just a vexation of spirit altogether. That's what um, um, King, you know, King Solomon said, I had learned vanity and I sought to learn folly and I sought to learn wisdom and all was vanity colossians 1 and 12 says giving thanks unto the father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light all we look through in the scriptures were being taught and being told listen you are my heir you are next up to the throne go through these sufferings that i have laid out for you go through these rebuke sessions that i have laid out for you suffer be patient through your suffering when you are changed to a low estate um stand firm hold still don't be quick learn integrity learn morals learn your values learn your lessons man and so that when this time comes in and unfolds in this in this place babylon and i begin to attack all right this place using my son and his angels to demonstrate my authority and power on earth as i always had now you will be changed in the twinkling of an eye. Now you will be redeemed. And then the glories and treasures and pleasures that we have been made ma are making for you presently new with these new planets, new systems that you'll inherit. You'll forevermore dwell in them and be able to ex uh, uh, and be enriched by them. So as I'm doing for you, do for me. You know, be fruitful unto in the every good work and increasing in the knowledge of Yahweh, walking worthily. All right, that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of Yahweh. I brought this out of this video. Is that a fine? Until next time, shalom.